time for the Malin Web Show. Join us each week as we go inside Dell City Marksman football with the Dell City head football coach, Malin Webb, on the South Louisiana Sports Network, powered by Milligan Brosmer Communications. Wanting to scan those old videos, films, or audio to DVD? We'll look no further than Milligan Communications. We can also scan your old pictures, slides, and negatives to picture quality as well. With thousands of happy customers, let Milligan Communications help put your treasured memories on a digital media. Call Milligan Communications today at 812-630-2449. Milligan Communications, capturing your yesterdays. You dream it, we create it at Street Dreams. Custom paint, fabrication, stereos, wheels, tires, and more. We're also your authorized Sinister Sound dealer. Street Dreams 317 624 1000, where you expect quality and get. And welcome to this week's Mail and Web Show. And Coach, last week you traveled down to Rockport to take on Les Husband's Rebels. Why don't you recap that game for us? <clears throat> um, you know, we, we started the game off with some adversity. Um, we didn't have Trent Kale or Aiden Farrand um, to, you know, at the running back positions for us this past Friday, um, which hurt us. And so, you know, we kind of knew that going into the week. Um, we had to get other guys ready, such as Braxton Beaver at fullback, who's a sophomore, and Caden Case Bolt at uh, the other wing position, who's a junior. And so, <clears throat> you know, they got all the reps last week. Um, and we got to Friday night, and, um, you know, South Spencer, they had a really good defensive game plan against us. Um, they knew that, you know, Noah Terry, he's our leading rusher, and so – you know, they kind of took him away. He, he ends up the game with about 70 yards rushing, which is his lowest total in probably these last five weeks. And so, um, you know, their their game plan was, was pretty effective against us in the run game. Um, uh, defensively, you know, I think we're the only team all year long to hold South Spencer under 150 passing yards in a game. And so, you know, that's a testament to our DBs. Um, you know, we always talk about how they're the best athletes on the field, and they kind of really showed that on Friday night just we couldn't get anything rolling offensively to, to keep us in the game late in the fourth quarter. And then, um, you know, I think our last possession offensively, we had a fumble uh, backed up on our own five when it was a, a two-point game at that point in time. So they recovered it on the five-yard line, and they punched it in, and that was that was practically the ball game. And, you know, it, it looked like uh, Ty's two-punt was, was two for eight from the air for 48 yards, and uh, hit Glenn both, uh, all, both times for 40, 48 yards. So, and yeah. along 44. Yeah, you know, um, that's that's something that, that we had to uh, resort to was, was our pass game because, you know, we, we didn't run the ball effectively. And so, um, you know, Tice, Tice did a really nice job in the pocket, um, you know, getting his feet underneath him and delivering good passes out to Kelby Glenn. And Kelby did a great job at, in terms of getting himself open. And so, but, you know, and with, with our offense, if we have to resort to passing, we're probably not in the best situation. And, um, you know, really the last six minutes of the game, that's what we kind of had to do. We were trying to catch South Spencer off guard every now and now and then um, by delivering one deep through the air. And, um, you know, we just – we couldn't make plays when we needed to. And, you know, this week we had a, our tournament roundtable for the, for the tournament. Mm-hmm. And uh, everybody on there, to a T, said that they think that Chelsea is moving in the right direction. Yeah, you know, I I think we are, um, and it's you know it's hard to say that when you're when you're two and seven, and it's hard sometimes to get kids to believe that you're moving in the right direction when you're two and seven. But you know, as a staff, I tell our staff every single Friday night, win or lose, I was like, I believe in what we're doing. What we're doing is the right thing, and it's just you know we have to communicate that to the kids, get them to believe in what we're doing, um, that it's that it is the right thing. You know, we were we were looking at the staff this past Saturday at something 
we've rushed for more yards this year than what we have the last two years. And, you know, everybody remembers that team from two years ago um, when we went 6-3 and three in the regular season. We were ranked as high as number five or six at one point in time in the two Aprils. And, you know, we've, we've rushed for more yards than what that team has while also playing less games as of right now. And so, um, you know, what we're doing on both sides of the ball is, is good stuff. Um, and, you know, that was kind of the message to the kids this past Friday is trust your training. You know, we're not going to do things throughout the week that's going to put you guys in bad conditions or we're not going to teach you something that doesn't correlate to Friday nights. And so, it's you know, it is difficult for kids to, you know, trust the process and see and see the things that we're doing and how it's, you know, the right things. But, um, you know, it's it's in due time. We got a lot of young kids out there on Friday nights as of right now. Um, and, you know, our seniors, regardless of the record, they've been really good leaders all year long. And so I really do think that the program's moving in the right direction. And, you know, um, I was involved in a, in a rebuild uh, program and, uh, and, 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 and a couple of, I've been coached for about 10 years, but, uh, but look where Southridge is today. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it takes small steps. Yeah. You know, Southridge was, even when I was in school back in 2013, I think Southridge won the sectional that year against a, a modern day team who I believe had went to state the year uh, previously. And so, um, no, modern day is really kind of the epitome of, you know, what you want your program standard to be. And, you know, it wasn't built overnight. It wasn't built in one year. It wasn't built in five years. Um, you know, Coach Coach Buning, he, he got there, and it took him a few years to get it. Now, you know, they set the standard for, for the PAC and all small schools around the Evansville area. And you've been listening to the Mainland Web Show on the Southwest Media Sports Network. Powered by Mainland Bus Recruiter, this is the back right to the messages from our sponsors. ever played in the universe. The pitcher is fierce. Danny Roberts is up at bat. And the crowd goes wild. He just won the game. Let's go. Yes. We protect the car you drive. Go get him, Danny. And the dreams that drive you. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. And welcome back to the Mainland Web Show. And I'll tell you what, Coach, this, it's, everyone's excited. Everyone, every every school in the state is excited because it's sectional week, the first week of sectional. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there's no better time in the year than uh, football sectionals. And so, um, you know, we drew Crawford County, and, um, you know, they're, they're 0-9, but, you know, on the flip side, we're 2-7. and So, um, you know, I've heard a lot of people throughout the week say, oh, you know, you guys got a really good draw. But, you know, in, at in, any point in time, you can get bumped out. And so um, I've told our kids, you know, all week long, don't worry about the opponent you're playing. Just, you know, worry about doing your job to the best of your abilities on Friday night. And so, um, you know, we've had a great week of practice up to this point right now. Um, and, you know, I really do like our chances heading into tomorrow night. And you know, you, and I looked at the Crawford County schedule, and it looks like they only have one common opponent of yours, Perry Central. Yes, yeah, they do have one common opponent, um, which is Perry Central. Um, and so, you know, we've broke down a lot of that film. Um, we've also broke down a lot of film of them playing against uh, Paoli. Since Paoli does a lot of what we do on offense, it's it's practically similar. Um, and so, you know, 
uh, I told our kids Monday when we, you know, gave them their game plans and went over the scouting reports and stuff, I told our kids, I said, you know, regardless of what Crawford's record is, I really do admire their team and their kids because it's really, really hard to continue to be invested when you're going out there every single Friday night and, you know, you're getting beat by 40-plus points. And so I told them, I was like, I admire them because they show up every day they still show up every single Friday night and they play as hard as they possibly can. And so, um, you know, I also told our kids, regardless of what the outcome is, just act like you've been there before. Um, you know, I think we're, we're going to be able to have some success. Um, I hope it's tonight, you know, that we can get a lot of guys some playing time considering last week, we got a lot of young guys in both on offense and defense. Um, you know, not necessarily that we wanted to, but you know, we had some banged up guys. But we're back to being kind of healthy again this week, which is a good thing. But, you know, I'm hoping that last week, us having to force some young guys into action, that that helps us this week. And I think we're a lot deeper team heading into the playoffs because of it now. Well, you know, um, you know, a lot of people know who the head coaches at, at these schools are, Malin Webb and, and Todd Wilkerson, et cetera. But uh, who do you have on staff? I know, I know we, we interviewed Coach Schilling earlier in the year, but who else do you have on staff? Yeah, I got Coach Schilling. He's a he's our defensive coordinator. Does a great job. He's been here about uh, ten to twelve years, somewhere within that range. He's also our head track coach and our weightlifting guy at the school. So it's nice to have somebody on staff that you know sees these kids in the weight room every single day, but also coaches another sport. You know, we really push um, you know multi-sport athletes. And then um, aside from him, we have uh, Eric Hendrickson. He's a he's a Tell City graduate. He's been on staff about ten years as well he's our d-line coach and our special teams coordinator and then um we have on the still on the defensive side of things we have alex herman he's a he's a al spencer graduate he was actually a senior when i was a freshman in high school um and he helps out with defensive backs for us and then also we have gamp miller who is a tell city graduate of 2016 he played quarterback and uh and linebacker and so he helps with outside linebackers and dbs on staff and then offensively we have myself um i'm still technically quote unquote the offensive coordinator um and i also coach quarterbacks and fullbacks and then uh we have our wide receivers coach which is coach Biddingfield. um he's also the head baseball coach once again and he um he coaches wide receivers for us and tight ends and then our offensive line coach is Matt Leisner. He, uh, he's been with us, I think this is his third year. He started when my older brother came in and became head coach. And so he's our offensive line guy. And then we have uh, Zeth Young, who's also a South Spencer graduate. He's um, a graduate of 2015. He was a grade below me. He's one of our running backs coaches. And this is his third year on staff. And then we also have Landon Bartlett, who is a South Spencer graduate of 20. 17 and this is his first year on staff so you know we've we've got a lot of young guys a lot of youth to us um which in a lot of cases i think you know benefits us because we can relate to kids more um you know we bring a lot of energy to the table at practice um but you know it's it's a great staff and you know when i took this job that was one of the things i was really worried about was you know losing guys just because of the coaching turnover that's always been around at Tell City. And so um, that was kind of emphasis number one for me when I got the job was reaching out to all these guys and making sure that they are still on board and still going to stay here. And I think that's something that the kids can appreciate because, you know, uh, you know, they have their, their specific position group coach. And, you know, that's that's their guy. And, you know, these kids are – that coach's kids. And so, um, you know, I think they can appreciate that the staff has – practically stayed the same in a sense but also that you know we're always trying to build on our staff too you know i always i always tell people you can never have too many sets of eyes and uh you know that's something that we're going to look into next year is possibly adding a few more guys to help out in position so that you know kids are always being watched and you know it's going to force them to practice better which in turn will help them off friday night and you know we started this show last year as the mac web show and uh why don't you give us an update on mac where's he at these days um, he's at Owensboro High School. He's the offensive coordinator. Um, and, you know, Owensboro's a perennial powerhouse over in Kentucky. And so that's where, well, he didn't start there, but 
he started his, his coaching career at South Spencer with the offense coordinator there under um, my head coach, uh, Tom Packer. And then he made the transition over to Owensboro since he was already teaching at Owensboro. And uh, he coached there for, oh, I want to say about four years. He was the defensive line coach. Um, you know, they had a lot of success as a defensive line but under him. And so, you know, within his first six years of coaching, he was an offensive coordinator and then also coached defensive line on the defensive side of the ball. And then that's when he came to Tell City for two years. Um, you know, like like I've told everybody, he was he was great for all of us because he brought a wealth of knowledge on both sides of the ball, and it kind of really changed our style of coaching. And, you know, he taught us how to coach. And so – then, you know, he went back to Owensboro this year. Um, and like I said, he's now the offensive coordinator. Um, he teaches special education over there. Um, you know, he just, he loves Owensboro. He always has, he always will. And, um, you know, Owensboro, like I said, a very, very good program. And for years, they're going to be competing for state championships, district championships, and all the above. Um, you know, they've got a really good staff. Really good kids, really good support over there, and uh, you know, they they the school buys in to the program, they buy into athletics. You know, almost anything that they need, they get. And you know, I've told people that all along too. You know, winning comes at a price, and you know, Owensboro is always willing to pay that price, and that's why they're continually good. Well, tell Mac we said hi, and uh, good luck this weekend, Crawford County. Yep, thank you. We'll do. And you've been listening to the Mailing Web Show on the Southwest Indiana Sports Network, powered by Millie Bros. Communications. We'll see you next week. You've been listening to the Mailing Web Show. Join us each week as we go inside Tell City Marksman Football with the Tell City Head Football Coach, Mailing Web, on the Southwest Indiana Sports Network, powered by Milligan Bros. for Communications. We'll see you next week.